Well, as the Pfizer vaccine rolls out for children ages 12 to 15, parents and guardians across Metro Detroit are working to make informed decisions about all of this, and it got us wondering what questions you have at home. We reached out on Facebook to find out, and right now our chief health editor, Dr. Nandy, is joining us live to answer some of your questions. Dr. Nandy, always a pleasure to have you with us. Thanks for coming on. Good morning. How are you? Doing well. Our first question comes from Lynn. On our Facebook page, Lynn asked, are any of the vaccines more effective in children than the others? And should parents consider shopping around for a particular vaccine? Of course, we've reported this morning Pfizer is the only one with emergency use authorization for kids right now, 12 to 15. But Dr. Nandy, do we know where things stand on the other vaccines down the road? Sure, you know, I'll, I'll have an unequivocal answer for the first part is do not wait and shop around because it was the same answer I gave with adults when, when the vaccines first came out. So the most effective vaccine is the one that's approved with Pfizer. So if you can get the Pfizer vaccine for your kids, get it now. Now, as far as the other other uh, companies, you know, for example, Moderna, you know, we want to make sure we get the trial uh, results and, and wait for approval before we quote unquote shop around. I would not shop around. We need to get herd immunity quickly and we need to get uh, folks immunized. So you know, if we get kids immunized, then I think we'll get to herd immunity and get the population protected and get back to normalcy. So you can enjoy the sunshine and not worry about everything else that's going on. So true. And when you're talking about 17 million more people being able to get vaccinated now with that, that age group of 12 to 15 has been opened up. It's huge. Well, others are wondering also about how much of this vaccine is needed for kids. A full grown adult could have different needs than a 12 year old. Is the dosage any different for children? It isn't, you know, it, they're keeping it simple. It's the same as you and I. So you get those doses uh, three weeks apart. And so that, that makes it at least to me, the, the manufacturing and, 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 and the rollout uh, simpler. And the other thing I'll tell you, pa parents ask me, my kids won't get sick. Why should I even give this vaccine? Remember, even if your kids don't get sick, you're protecting the population. And remember, this is not a panacea. Kids still get sick, kids still get hospitalized and kids still die. So we need to understand that and not look at it as a, as a you know, like this is not needed at all. I think it's definitely needed. Well, a lot of social media rumblings going on about potential long term effects on children. Would kids have potential stronger side effects since they have stronger immune, immune responses in many cases? No, the, the nice thing about the stronger immune response is that, you know, in these trials, it was 100 percent efficacious. You don't get any better than that. And that's because the stronger immune response. Now, kids will get the same things that we all did. Right. You may get a, a, a little pain in the arm, you can get fatigue, some get fever, but don't let the, the you know, discomfort for 24, maybe 48 hours, you know, dissuade you or, or make you think that I shouldn't give this to my kids. It should not give long-term side effects that are worse. Remember, most of the side effects that we've seen will happen in the first few weeks. So if you don't get that, there's, it's very unlikely to get long-term uh, side effects. That's what the science tells you. So we know from these trials, the short-term side effects are, are, are minimal if not, so we don't expect long-term side effects, and that's what science tells us. So I think I am confident to give it to my kids, and I think people who are watching and listening should feel very confident so we can get past this virus and get back to normalcy. That's the key right now. Of course, if anybody has any question, consult with your pediatrician, with your primary care physician to get the answers that you need. Dr. Nandy, thank you so much for joining us live this morning. My pleasure.